Are you a gamer who loves the big budgeted AAA games that the video game industry puts out every single year? Do you love the big AAA exclusives that Sony produces? If so, well then Sony has a console that they are making specifically for you, and that is the PlayStation 5. What is going on guys, Ryan Delthor19, the man with the million, back again with another video. Hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. And if you don't mind, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more future content. I would greatly appreciate it. So today we're gonna to be talking about this Wall Street Journal article that came out today that talks about how Sony is positioning the PlayStation 5 for next gen and the demographic that they are going after. And it's pretty clear that they are really doubling down on the hardcore gamers. And I quote, they are focusing on hardcore gamers who obsess over the latest feature. This article talks about how Sony is going to make more AAA exclusives from their own in-house studios and how Sony is strengthening its relationships with the big publishers who make those gigantic games at the expense of some of the smaller developers out there. Because Sony sees, at least from their data, that people buy PlayStations or people buy consoles for graphics heavy games. And that people buy a console for the big AAA exclusives and not for the small indie titles that come out that could seem like they run on a smartphone. And this is how they're going to position themselves versus their main competitor, Xbox. That's right, their main competitor. In the article, it goes on to state that they view Microsoft's Xbox next generation console, the Xbox Scarlet, as its biggest and you know main rival going into next gen. They consider Stadia a kind of mid to long-term competitor. They're not really worried about them in the short term. As we know, streaming hasn't really taken off yet. Nobody really knows how that go. But they do say, eventually, uh, you might have to worry about them. And of course, Nintendo. But they actually say they don't view Nintendo as a rival. That Nintendo's age demographic skews so young that it doesn't kind of overlap with PlayStation. So it's basically, in their eyes, the PlayStation 5 versus Scarlet. And they're doing everything possible to make sure people choose the PlayStation 5 over Xbox Scarlet. And it's doubling down on one of the things that worked out extremely well for PlayStation this generation. And that is the big budgeted AAA games that Sony themselves makes, as well as getting exclusive marketing and exclusive timed content from their publishing partners. Now, something that worked out extremely well for Sony this gen was partnering up with Activision and Bungie for things like Destiny or Ubisoft and Watch Dogs or Rockstar and Red Dead Redemption 2. And according to the article, they are pretty much going to do that as well. They are spending a lot of time and resources making sure their relationships with those types of publishers are even better going forward. So you can expect them to have more marketing deals, potentially maybe some timed exclusive actual games. You all remember when Sony basically went to Capcom and funded you know, Street Fighter V, which never made its way to Xbox. Maybe something along those lines happen. But of course, exclusive content that you can only find on PlayStation, stuff like hats, guns, maybe emissions, the people, you know, and, and people usually complain about that. They complain about the timed exclusives and the exclusive content, but for Sony, it's a business and they feel that that makes PlayStation 5 more of a worthy purchase over its main competitor. And that is what they are focusing on. But of course, with the focus heavy, on AAA exclusives from their own studios and trying to partner up with the bigger publishers. You know, they don't have unlimited resources, which means the indie scene, the smaller developers, they basically aren't giving them the time of day. Unlike what they did with the PlayStation 4 at the beginning of this generation. Now, if you recall, one of the nicknames the PlayStation had at the very beginning of this gen from 2013 to roughly maybe 2015, maybe a little bit into 2016, a lot of people called it, 
the Indy Station. The Indy Station, right? Because while Sony was busy, uh, you know, letting their studios make games that took a long time to make, like God of War, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us, Uncharted 4, Bloodborne, Horizon Zero Dawn, there was a gap in that exclusive games department that was filled by indie games that Sony partnered with. There'd be dedicated segments on their E3 stage showing off, you know, a wide selection of great indie titles that only came to PlayStation and PC that didn't make their way to Xbox and obviously weren't on Nintendo at the time. But Sony is forgoing that strategy, instead focusing on the big time publishers who make the big time games because they feel that is what people buy systems for. So the indie scene is left out in the cold. Now some people will say and some analysts say, well that will make the PlayStation 5 uh, library less diverse that you want those indie games on there because it adds a wide selection of games to your library and makes people want to buy them but they feel that people really only buy consoles for the big AAA games and the you know stalwarts like Madden FIFA Call of Duty and that nobody really buys them specifically for indie games which I actually agree with I actually agree that most people buy consoles for the big experiences uh, that come out from these big publishers every single year and the stalwarts that do come out yearly. I don't really think people buy a console for a $20 indie game. So I do agree with Sony at that stance and who am I to disagree with what they're doing? They're currently dominating the video game industry. It seems like whatever they're doing uh, it is the right approach. Now, however, <sighs> Sony also is a little bit cocky in this. And, you know, they deserve the right to be cocky. Because they basically have said, it doesn't really matter that we are going to ignore indies. Because indies are going to come to us because the PlayStation user base, it will be too big to ignore. That's right that even though we are not going to give the time of day to the indie developers because we want to give our attention to the big AAA publishers of the world to get their content in some you know shape or fashion exclusive to our platform that those indie developers will be rushing to put their games on our platform because we are going to have the most consoles out there have a user base that is willing to spend money and you'd be foolish not to put well your game on the playstation uh, 5 in that ecosystem so basically sony's saying you know what don't put your game on the playstation 5 at your own peril we're gonna be number one we're not even gonna recognize your existence but you're still gonna come to us and give us your games because you know we'll have the biggest user base and your game will sell because of that. It's definitely a very interesting strategy and one that was obviously uh, very different from the beginning of the generation. Um, so I know a lot of PlayStation fans are loving this. This is exactly what they wanted to hear. They want to know that they'll get those big AAA exclusives that Sony makes and actually say here in the article that Sony is going to make even more of them. So you'll see more games from Naughty Dog, more games from Guerrilla Games, uh, more titles from Ben Studio, you know, probably a Days Gone 2, another title from Ghost. Um. In the article, they say Sony is also looking to make more big budget games at its in house software studios, which already produce exclusive PlayStation games. And that will make PlayStation fans happy. Look, I've been on the record saying that I have enjoyed PlayStation exclusives much more than Xbox exclusives this generation. That will more than likely probably continue going into next gen. Like, I'm really looking forward to God of War 2 and Spider-Man 2. And for people that love Horizon Zero Dawn, there'll be a sequel to that. There'll be a sequel to Days Gone 2, which hopefully will be much better than Days Gone. Sucker Punch might be able to make another game. There's that rumored new studio working on Uncharted. Uh, after Last of Us comes out, what is Naughty Dog gonna do? Are they gonna be on new IP? So Sony is very much doubling down on big AAA cinematic games. And there's a segment of the market that really love that. 
and that are going to buy the PlayStation 5 for it. Now, Xboxes, they're doing a little bit different approach. Content is still king. I 100% agree. Exclusives kind of separate your platform. Sony says we're going to get exclusives not only from our studios, but we're going to get timed exclusives from bigger third parties. We're going to get marketing exclusives from also those third parties. And that's going to set apart the PlayStation 5 from basically everyone else. Xbox has taken an approach of like, okay, we're going to have a bunch of games. Some of them will be AAA, some will be AA. It'll be easy access to that ecosystem through Game Pass. We're going to have a lot, strengthen our relationship with a lot of indie developers to put said games on Game Pass. It's definitely seeming like two different approaches with Microsoft's gaming for everybody approach, where it's Sony's gaming for the hardcore. So whichever one speaks to you. I know a lot of people listening to this video are going to be about those AAA exclusives that Sony and their partners make, and they're gonna need a PlayStation 5 to play it. Other people are going to appreciate Xbox's approach. So it's just a matter of which one speaks more to you. For me, I'm gonna give them both. I like Xbox's approach. I also like Sony's approach. So I'll have the best of both worlds. I got a PlayStation 5 for those big time exclusives that Sony's known to make. And I'll get Xbox to play all the multi-platforms and the Game Pass stuff, because that really does speak to me as I pl as I am someone who plays hundreds of games a year. You know, if you've been following the channel and you see what type of, uh, you know, gamer score I have on the Xbox. So it all comes down to personal preference. You want those AAA games? Sony's making a console for you. That is the PlayStation 5. And you know what? I really can't disagree what Sony's doing. They have a pretty singular core message. Hey, hardcore gamers, hello out there. You want AAA games? We have AAA games. Get the PlayStation 5. It's a very clear, concise marketing message that I think will do wonders for the PlayStation 5. It's gonna sell gangbusters. They'll probably have a great exclusive lineup and great content for their customers. And it might pale in comparison to what Xbox has. Who really knows? But it's definitely, definitely a compelling message that Sony is going to be offering next year. Anyways, guys, that is the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Share this out on social media. Maybe tell a friend about the channel. I'd appreciate that. And if you always want to be notified immediately when I drop new videos, make sure you hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.